In today's show, Bitcoin sees $43,000 dip amid expectations of another run-up for the Bitcoin price action. In today's show, I'll be breaking down the latest technical analysis. And as crypto analyst, me Calvin, they pop shares here. Short-term correction happened on Bitcoin after taking the liquidity again. Looks to me like we're going to see another run to the highs as the correction is not as swift as we normally would be. And he goes on to share, the markets are relatively calm. People have low interest in crypto right now. Engagement is low on social media, on all accounts. Ethereum gas fees are on an ultra low level. Those are the times that you actually should start paying attention as it gives opportunities. And as Equinometric shares here, the small fish are stacking sats like there is no tomorrow. And as Rec Capital shares here, Bitcoin has entered a volume gap. Volume gaps tend to get filled entirely. Major volume gap resistance lies ahead at the $48,000 region, which happens to be the mid-range area of the macro range. And as CryptoQuant CEO shares here, Bitcoin accumulation phase begins. Newbies who joined last year are evolving to long-term hodlers. The market cap for six-month-plus-old BTC takes 52% now. It was 13% at the cycle top, unlikely to hit the previous low of 28000 as the newbies will wait for other newbies in the next cycle. And as Dennis Porter shares here, Bitcoin is the only one form of money on the planet that can't be blocked, frozen, debased, censored, manipulated, or corrupted. And people still think $45,000 is expensive. And speaking of a $45,000 Bitcoin price, Bitcoin at 45K looks cheap when compared with gold's market cap. That's right. As you can see, the gold market cap currently sitting just above 12 trillion with the Bitcoin market cap at 837 billion, which is roughly 7% of golds. I'll be breaking this down for you. Also in today's show, here's what triggered Bitcoin's big bounce according to the host of Invest Answers. He says the ongoing military conflict between Russia and Ukraine contributed to the major Bitcoin buy-in, quoting him here. All it takes is a little buy to trigger this and maybe that $254 million that came out of a place like Russia, the Eurozone and the Ukraine, maybe that's all it took to create that short squeeze and make it happen. Also in today's show, legendary billionaire Ken Griffin has a change of heart and admits he was wrong about Bitcoin and reveals a huge price bombshell is headed towards Bitcoin and Ethereum. Quoting him right here, I still have my skepticism, but there are hundreds and millions of people in this world today who disagree with that to the extent that we're trying to help institutions and investors solve their portfolio allocation problems. We have to give serious consideration to being a market maker in crypto. Also in today's show, we'll be taking a look at the overall crypto market. As you can see, Bitcoin, Ether, and all the major alts are currently correcting and in the red. But where's the Bitcoin price likely to go next? Find out all this plus so much more in today's show. Here are crypto news alerts. I drop a brand new episode every single day. The goal is to get to 100,000 subs along with a $100,000 Bitcoin price. And if you like getting that crypto, be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day, just like this. Today's episode is brought to you by the FTX app, formerly known as Blockfolio. I've been using this app literally every single day for the past few years. It's the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is check my crypto portfolio. I personally love it because it's the easiest and fastest way to buy Bitcoin, Ether, and other top cryptocurrencies with zero fees, truly making this a no-brainer. And they're trusted by over 6 million and people worldwide in over 200 plus countries around the world and have a special promo they're running right now where you can earn free crypto in every trade over 10 bucks here's how it works when you use my referral link in the description right down below every trade over ten dollars earns you a chance to get a random free coin and the more you trade the more you earn so what are you waiting for go ahead and use my referral link in the description right down below and download the ftx app today make some trades claim your free crypto and let's start stacking those sats shall we all right welcome back to another episode of crypto news alerts i'm your host jv how's it going crypto fam make some noise in the live chat the bitcoin corrected from highs above forty-five thousand dollars on march 3rd as traders optimism over continued upside remained in the driving seat and right here you're looking at the bitcoin one hour candle chart now data from quintel graph markets pro and trading view should bitcoin briefly dip in below forty-three thousand this morning on thursday the reset was expected punctuating a multi-day uptrend which had seen the pair add ten thousand dollars in a single week that's right just the other day bitcoin added seven thousand dollars in a single 24-hour period and quoting crypto analysts me calvin they pop right here short-term correction happened on bitcoin after taking the liquidity again looks to me like we're going to see another run to the highs as the correction is not as swift 
as we normally would be. Eyes were on the yearly opening price just above $46,000 alongside order book resistance at 48K. Meanwhile, accumulation continued with smaller investors coming into focus as keen buyers at the current levels. As Equinometrics points out here, the small fish are stacking sats like there is no tomorrow. Let's freaking go. And as McCalvin A. Pop shares here, the market's relatively calm. People have low interest in crypto right now. Engagement is low on social media on all accounts. Ethereum gas fees are on an ultra low level. Those are the times that you actually should start paying attention as it gives opportunities. And as Rec Capital shares here, Bitcoin has entered a volume gap. Volume gaps tend to get filled entirely. Major volume gap resistance lies ahead at the $48,000 region. So keep your eyes out on that level, which happens to be the mid-range area of the macro range. And as shared here by the CryptoQuant CEO, Bitcoin accumulation phase begins. Newbies who joined last year are evolving to long-term hodlers. The market cap for six month plus old BTC takes 52% now. It was 13% at the cycle top, unlikely to hit the previous low of 28,000 as the newbies will wait for other newbies in the next cycle. So there you have it. And as Dennis Porter shares here, Bitcoin is the only one form of money on the planet that can't be blocked frozen, debased, censored, manipulated, or corrupted, and people still think $45,000 is expensive. Touche. And before I break down next story of the day, $45,000 Bitcoin price looks cheap when compared with gold's market cap. But first, let's take a quick look at the overall crypto market. As you can see, most of the major cryptos are currently correcting. And in the red, with Bitcoin down 1.5% for the day, trading just above $43,400. We have Ether down about 3%, trading just above $2,900. We have Luna barely in the red, up about a quarter of a percent, trading just above 92 bucks, which is one of the top gainers for the week. We have Polkadot down 2.5%, trading at $18.40. And Solana down 3.3%, trading just above hundred dollars but all right now let's break down our next story of the day bitcoin pulled off an impressive double digit rally this year but the digital asset has been struggling to break that critical 45k resistance this level does not hold any historical importance because it has been easily breached multiple times the same could be said for bitcoin's 850 billion dollar market cap which isn't anywhere close to silver's 1.4 trillion or amazon and google's 1.7 trillion dollar market value. Bitcoin's market cap is often compared with gold, which has a $12.3 trillion market value and is currently the leading global store of value. Therefore, the answer to the $45,000 resistance might lay in institutional investors' comparison of Bitcoin versus gold. But by looking at institutional investor funds, assets under management, and daily trading volume, it is possible to infer that Bitcoin's 93% market capitalization discount is justified as the digital gold thesis is being proven right. Governments around the globe have implemented tighter financial controls for many reasons, which could reinforce the self-sovereign and decentralized advantages of cryptocurrency. For example, in China, they have a social credit system, which places offenders on a social credit block list, which will stop them from securing loans or even using the transportation system. They can shut you off financially just like that. And more recently, Canada's short-lived Emergencies Act gave financial institutions the discretionary power to freeze protesters' bank accounts with no civil liabilities on February 15th. And another example is this week, as Russians have been sanctioned from payment services like Apple Pay and Google Pay. These events could make an analysis of the gold Bitcoin market cap even more relevant. Right here, you're looking at the most valuable tradable global assets around the world, with gold leading with a $12.2 trillion market cap. Number nine is Bitcoin with $837 billion market cap. And according to this data, Bitcoin's current $837 billion market cap translates to roughly 7% of that of gold. To assess how those markets are valued, one should compare their daily trading volume and institutional holdings. Cryptocurrencies are known for inflated exchange traded numbers, but some providers, including Nomics, have their own adjusted volume calculations. As you can see here, the accumulated 30-day volume on March 2nd and USD. This data shows a $404 billion 30-day exchange volume for Bitcoin, which is equivalent to $13.5 billion per day. Exchange-traded products such as the Grayscale Bitcoin Fund added another $0.4 billion in daily liquidity, according to Crypto Compares February 2022 report. Therefore, Bitcoin currently presents an aggregate of $13.9 billion on average daily volume. And according to Gold Hub, there is $170 billion in daily liquidity for gold, including registered over-the-counter transactions. This is in addition to regulated futures markets and gold exchange-traded products. Thus, Bitcoin volume currently represents roughly 8% 
of that of gold. Now let's discuss the gold ETF versus the Bitcoin exchange traded products. Bitcoin's multiple exchange traded products such as Grayscale and exchange traded notes have grown considerably. As a result, there are $37.8 billion in assets under management locked in Bitcoin exchange traded products. That's equivalent to 4.5% of the crypto's current market value of $840 billion. Now gold back ETF products total $221.2 billion according to Gold Hub data on February 25th, excluding the aggregate 61% non-financial gold use such as jewelry, industrial, and other. The remaining market cap stands at $6 trillion. Therefore, the fund's exchange-traded investment vehicles corresponds to 3.7% of the adjusted gold's market value. So at $45,000, Bitcoin's average volume traded in institutional investors' holdings roughly matches gold's market with $850 billion market cap, which may be a short-term concern for investors. The cryptocurrency still has other emerging use cases, such as El Salvador's micropayment channels that use the Lightning Network. And as digital gold becomes only a part of Bitcoin's valuation model, traders are likely to price in higher upside. And consequently, the $45,000 level should become a distant memory. That's right. I can't wait. I feel it's only a matter of time before Bitcoin blows past $100,000 this year. When do you feel that is likely to happen? Let me know in the comments right down below. I want to give a quick shout out to iTrust Capital, the world's largest crypto IRA platform with over $3.5 billion in transactions. If you're looking to trade crypto tax-free, look no further than iTrust. And yes, they are backed by the world's leading institutional cold storage provider, Coinbase Custody, with a $320 million insurance policy. So go ahead and use my referral link in the description right down below to take advantage of the number one crypto IRA provider in America. And if you sign up today, you're going to receive a $100 funding reward as a free bonus. So go ahead and use my referral link in the description right down below. And let's start stacking those sats tax-free. And before I break down next story of the day, and I share what triggered Bitcoin's big bounce, according to the host, of Invest Answers. But first, let's take a quick look at the overall crypto market cap, sitting just above $1.9 trillion with $88 billion in volume in the past 24 hours. The current Bitcoin dominance is 43.1%, with the Ether dominance at 18.3%. And checking out the top 100 cryptocurrency gainers for the week, as you can see here, we have Waves up a whopping 120%. We have Luna up 77.7%, Rune up 81.5%, and ANC up 68.2% in a C of green and checking out one of my favorite indicators is the crypto greed and fear index shows we're currently rated a 39 in fear yesterday was a 52 neutral last week a 23 in extreme fear and last month a 26 in fear and if you're not familiar with the crypto greed and fear index extreme fear can be a sign investors are too worried that could be a great buying opportunity aka btfd buy that freaking dip and when investors are getting too greedy that means the market is due for a correction. But all right, now let's break down our next story of the day. A popular crypto analyst is looking for clues as to why the king crypto suddenly broke to the upside after weeks of price action that had been sideways at best. In a new strategy session, the host of Financial Education YouTube channel, Invest Answers, lays out the possible scenarios for his 416,000 subs, which range from the geopolitical to the technical, quoting him here, risk on his back. Certain names that are really beaten down are back. Not only the lack of trust around the world in fiat regimes, but also risk gone. This is what I believe is the real reason, the perpetual funding rate. One tool available to crypto investors is the ability to take leverage positions and futures contracts that never expire. In order for markets to maintain funding, periodic payments are required. That explains how funding rates impacted Bitcoin's recent rally. As he explains here, there was a massive negative funding rate. This can lead to a short squeeze. When the rate is positive, long positions pay short positions. Conversely, when the rate is negative, short positions pay long positions. And when it's very negative, it's very concerning. It tells me that all the shorts are going in hard and they're investing in a lot of puts. But I think the short side got squeezed hard in a massive short squeeze. Now, the host says that the ongoing military conflict between Russia and the Ukraine contributed to the major Bitcoin buy-in, as he shares here. All it takes is a little buy to trigger this, and maybe that $254 million that came out of a place like Russia, the Eurozone, and the Ukraine, maybe that's all it took to create that short squeeze and make it happen. The Invest Answers host concludes by saying he disagrees with traditional media's interpretation of what caused Bitcoin to rise. He believes that Bitcoin's perpetual funding rates being so negative had already set the table for a possible squeeze and the subsequent military conflict then forced investors' hands. As he shares here, this is what I believe happened. All the mainstream media is incorrect. We've done the numbers and we think this is triggered by the initial, the lighter that lit the fuse was the initial money out of Ukraine, Russia, and oligarchs 
in London, but the reason was the perpetual funding rate was so negative and that caused a massive short squeeze. And to watch this entire analysis with Invest Answers entitled, Who's Buying Bitcoin and What Triggered That $7,000 Daily Candle? Check the show notes below the video in the description. And before I break down funnel story of the day, legendary billionaire Ken Griffin has a change of heart and admits he was wrong about Bitcoin and reveals a huge price bombshell is headed towards Bitcoin and Ethereum. But first, I want to remind you to smash that show more button right below this video in the description for a detailed analysis of what's going on in the crypto market. This goes for all 1,000 plus videos right here on my YouTube channel. Also, some very helpful resources for you to plug into, including my crypto merch store, now live at merch.cryptonewsalerts.net. Also, have a daily letter, which goes out to over 30,000 subscribers every single day. To subscribe, visit letter.cryptonewsalerts.net. Also, have a blog I update daily, which can be found at cryptonewsyes.com. Also, be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day, just like this. And of course, you can find me on all the major podcasts and platforms from Spotify to Apple's iTunes to Google Play. And if you're listening to the pod, be sure to check out the YouTube channel at cryptonewsalerts.net for the full premium experience with video. And of course, you can follow me on crypto Twitter, Facebook, Telegram, and TikToks, so wherever you at, be sure to follow me there. But all right, now let's break down our final story of the day. The founder and CEO of Citadel. LLC, Ken Griffin, has been amongst the biggest critics of the crypto industry in the past few years. However, in his most recent appearance, he admitted being wrong about the asset class and that he now sees its merits. It's safe to say that the digital asset sector has formed two opposite teams, industry supporters and its critics. The American billionaire Ken Griffin has been a part of the second club as he believed that Bitcoin and altcoins could harm the American dollar. And at one point, he even said it's a jihadist move that some would choose Bitcoin over the U.S. national currency. Hilarious, right? In a recent interview with Bloomberg, though, Citadel's executive made a U-turn. He noted that crypto has been one of the greatest stories in finance over the course of the last years and that the current market cap of the asset that class is almost $2 trillion. And as such, Griffin admitted not being right on this call. And he further predicted that many businesses will open their arms to the cryptocurrency universe in the months to come. Despite still having doubts about the industry, though, Griffin said his company is looking for a way in. Quoting him here, I still have my skepticism, but there are hundreds and millions of people in this world today who disagree with that to the extent that we are trying to help institutions and investors solve their portfolio allocation problems. We have to give serious consideration to being a market maker in crypto. Now, the American started softening his harsh stance on the digital asset sector back in November of last year. Remember when we hit an all-time high of 69K? Now, back then, he forecasted that Ethereum would become the most dominant crypto project. But nevertheless, he argued that Bitcoin is too harmful to the environment and has low transaction speed and is vulnerable to fraud, which we all know is nothing more than FUD. So I like to point that out. Kevin Griffin, get your facts right. Now for some other influencers who have changed their viewpoint on crypto. We have Kevin O'Leary among those who bashed the digital asset space, but is currently a part of the ecosystem. Back in 2019, the TV host labeled Bitcoin as useless currency and garbage. However, in 2021, he changed his stance, saying he respects the asset. And shortly after, he turned into a Bitcoin hodler, allocating 3% of his portfolio. And another is Mark Cuban. Remember, he compared Bitcoin to bananas and said, yo, bananas have more intrinsic value than Bitcoin because you can eat them. And then we also have the notorious former stockbroker known as the Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belfort, is another individual part of the club. While in 2018, he predicted that Bitcoin is going away. And in 2021, he praised the merits of the primary crypto and envisioned a price of $100,000 by the end of the year. Send it. Alexander Mamaslakov, co-founder of Mobile Digital Bank, Mindplex, said in an emailed comment, adding that the Bitcoin price could continue to climb. For what it's worth, the growth was sparked as investors saw that the prices have been depressed and are low enough to present a good opportunity to take a position that will lead to gains. Should this ongoing accumulation continue, Bitcoin is poised to retest its 90-day price high above $59,000 in the coming weeks this March, while Ethereum is on track to retest 3,500 resistance level before the end of the month. So there you have it. Now for the top three comments from yesterday's episode, Chris Minka wrote, my astrology bear friends are starting to figure Figure out they are wrong. You got near record hash rate and low supply on exchanges, along with no weak short term hodlers left. We got El Salvador bonds locking up a good amount of spot Bitcoin March 20th. I see little downside risk and supply shock in play. BTFD, don't FOMO. 100% agreed with you, fam. Bitcoin supply shock incoming. Send it. Our next featured comment comes from Wild Bill. If El Salvador is to be the financial mecca of the world, then Michael Saylor would own the world. 
pretty much. Now for our third and final featured comment comes from David Hall, new Bitcoin price indicator. Bitcoin is undervalued slash strong buy signal. Whenever the price is below, JV's subscriber count. I dig it. And to be featured on tomorrow's episode, drop me a comment right down below.